Hello, beautiful people. I'm Chris Maddox, founder of the Wild Woman Project and Wild Woman Fest. And I'm speaking to you today because we always meet like this at new moon time. And the new moon is upon us. Depending upon your time zone, it will arrive on March 31st or April 1st. And this is the first new moon of a brand new season. So if you're in the Southern hemisphere, it's the first new moon of autumn. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, it's the first new moon of spring. There's a sense of renewal and new life and um, kind of really a the beginning of the natural worlds, uh, one of the many cycles in the natural world, the seasons. So spring comes forth and uh, we begin again. So we are carrying on with our Path of the Poets series with this. So some of you have been along for the ride. Some of you may be new to this ride, which is basically every new moon since last September, we have been turning our hearts towards a particular poem written by a poet who in her own way embodies the wild woman archetype. And we are in for a treat with this one. So we are looking at a poem called School Prayer by a fantastic uh, poet, essayist, and naturalist named Diane Ackerman. And I want to read a little bit uh, about this poem. This is, this, is, this is Diane Ackerman speaking about how this poem even came to be. So she said, years ago when Congress was thinking about reinstating school prayer, I was asked to compose one. She's in the United States. Um, I believed in the separation of church and state as our founding fathers did, and I didn't want children having to pray to someone else's idea of God, but I did want them to, to develop a sense of spirituality about the planet and each other. So I wrote this poem. So we're going to wander through this poem together and you'll find the written out poem below this video if you want to uh, follow along or if you just want to listen you can close your eyes or look out the window or sit on your stoop or porch and be outside for it this is a beautiful poem we'll, we'll go all the way through it and then we'll back up and kind of see if we can crack it open a little bit and learn something new all right, so here it is. School Prayer by Diane Ackerman. In the name of the daybreak and the eyelids of morning and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs, I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred, but offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery, as a messenger of wonder, as an architect of peace. In the name of the sun and its mirrors and the day that embraces it and the cloud veils drawn over it and the uttermost night and the male and the female and the plants bursting with seeds and the crowning seasons of the firefly and the apple. I will honor all life, wherever in whatever form it may dwell, on earth my home and in the mansions of the stars. So we can imagine, you know, this prayer poem um, really as an offering from an elder, you know, Diane Ackerman is a naturalist, which means, you know, she is, has delved deeply into the history of nature, which includes all sorts of study, including scientific study. Um, when she was getting her PhD, one of the uh, one of the um, 
committee members on her dissertation was the famous um, science communicator and scientist Carl Sagan. So he was sort of like a mentor to her. So this is a woman coming in, Diane Ackerman, with this rich understanding, this nuanced understanding, this detailed understanding of the natural world. And she's offering this poem prayer to the children, you know, as an elder. With all of her knowledge, she thought, you know, if the children were to speak a prayer in school based on what I know and what I've learned and my sense, this is what I'd offer them, you know, the words I'd offer them to speak. So there's something very um, precious about that gift, you know, and I think to read this poem is to really be aware that that's a big task. I mean, imagine if Congress or your government where you are asked you if you were to make a prayer that children said in school, what would it be? You know, and I love the fact that she was very sensitive to this idea that she didn't want anyone to be forced to pray to anybody else's God. So she didn't choose um, to come in from a religious perspective, but she comes in with a deep sense of spirituality and her sense of what is sacred, you know, is life where some person might, some other person uh, might use God. Uh, for instance, on the last new moon, we looked at a poem by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, The Painted Face of God, where she does a, a very similar thing actually that Diane Ackerman does here, where she paints this beautiful picture about nature. But from her perspective, all of the natural world is the painted face of God. And that's how she speaks about it. Diane Ackerman is, is dis different. She, and, and I think we honor them both. They're both beautiful, powerful, potent perspectives. So Diane Ackerman comes in really from a sense of the uh, purely looking at, at the natural world and life itself and naming that as the sacred you know she's saying like let's let's go back like this first verse in the name of the daybreak and the eyelids of morning then on the other hand and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs you know she's talking about day and night it's like in the name of the day and the name of the night you know that's something universal that we all experience that we can all connect to then she goes on to say i swear i will not dishonor my soul with hatred and this particular line stands out so strongly in the times in which we live. This, this poem I, was published sometime in the, I think the early 90s or in the 90s sometime. And it just rings so relevant and useful as a prayer, not only for children, but for all of us in these times, you know, this particular second verse is so powerful. She starts, I swear, I will not dishonor my soul with hatred. You know, thinking so much about not taking the hate bait that comes in in so many different forms these days for so many different reasons this sense of there's always another that we're hating now and now we're hating this person and depending upon you know which team you're on you're hating that's your enemy and we're hating this and it's always that person's wrong dumb 
dangerous, whatever it is, they're less than. And to do that, to engage in that kind of behavior of othering our fellow human family and members dishonors us, dishonors our soul. I love the fact that she's like a naturalist. She's not explicitly um, like a spiritualist, but she uses the word soul. And there's something about that that I that is important. I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred. And she goes on, so I won't do that. She says, but I will do this. But offer myself humbly. Offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery, as a messenger of wonder, and as an architect of peace. It's such a well-rounded prayer or bow, you know, to say I'm going to be a guardian of nature, to say I am going to be a healer of misery. I'm going to be a messenger of wonder. I'm going to be an architect of peace. I mean, all of those things, if we all really had if we took this on as our own kind of prayer, as our own kind of vow, that'd be a really beautiful world to live in, <laughs> you know, if people were walking around committed to those things, to being a guardian of our home on earth, to having a, a humble heart about wanting to heal any misery inside and outside of them, wanting to be a messenger or a, or a communicator in any way of, of wonder. Like what that does, what wonder does to the heart. Um, especially, you know, in these, these times where so many are in pain and, you know, struggling so many. What do we say? to each other? How do we speak to each other? How do we relate to each other? So to be a messenger of wonder, to be intentional about that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak into wonder when I am communicating. There's something really beautiful about that. And then finally, I'm gonna be an architect of peace, an architect of peace. You know, I heard something about peace recently that really changed it for me. And it was actually from the great um, Celtic mystic, John O'Donohue. And he said something like, um, you know, peace is not some empty thing. You know, peace is full. That helped me connect to it. Because peace always sort of seemed to me like an emptiness. But I'm thinking recently about what it's full of. So to be an architect of peace, what is peace made of? You know, really, truly, when, when we are at peace, what's happening there? What are we experiencing? And then here, Diane Ackerman is, is inviting us to be an architect, to design it in our own little lives or in the big life, you know, whatever is your call and your way to be one of those who are trying to build something beautiful, peaceful. Then she goes on in this next verse to say, in the name of the sun and its mirrors and the day that embraces it and the cloud veils drawn over it and the uttermost night and the male and the female and the plants bursting with seeds and the crowning seasons of the firefly and the apple. So it just goes on and on in the name of, in the name of, in the name of, in the name of. And I actually invite you this new moon to write your own in the name of verse. And then what do you see in the natural world that just, you know, 
guts you or, <laughs> or, or makes you smile or makes your heart open or makes you weep, like that moves you, you know, in the name of the river stones, steady in movement, you know, whatever you make your own verse. And if you'd like to share that verse, I love, love hearing from you. It's so fun to hear um, your heart prayers, you know? So if you want to share your verse that you write, please share it in the comments below this video. And I can't not wait to read them. Um, and then you can also just share it in the privacy of your own journal. It's a practice that you can keep the whole moon cycle long, you know, you can wake up in the morning and write a new piece of it in the name of the uh, peach blossoms, in the name of the uh, I was looking at my own <laughs> window in the name of the chickens that peck the ground, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you see to write that. So she goes on and on and on in this beautiful thing, just appreciating the details of life. And that's one of the great, one of the things I think that we can sometimes forget is that not only is the earth our home and literally sustains our lives, our breath, our food, water, everything that we need to live. It is also this enormous, bountiful source of spiritual strength and resilience. Nature is always there, it's always there. You can step outside no matter where you are or how busy you are and receive the blue sky or the raindrops. You can receive the bird songs or the way the, the wind moves the blades of grass. You can allow yourself to slow down and feel, and there's something so steadying about that and so comforting about that. And I think in these times that are so challenging and, and changing and rattling um, the world as we have known it and our lives as we have known them, Anywhere that we can find stability and moments of peace and joy to, to embrace those, to hold them close while they're here, you know? So nature offers so much. Final verse is, I will honor all life wherever and in whatever form it may dwell, on earth my home and in the mansions of the stars. I will honor all of life wherever and in whatever form it may dwell. So she uses the word in the second verse in the fourth verse, she talks about honoring. So she says, I will not dishonor. I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred. And then in the end, she says, I will honor all life, wherever and in whatever form it may dwell. So that sense of what it is to honor in our life, you know, and in our actions and in our speech and in our creative acts and in our relations with all of life, with the people that we love, with the people that we disagree with, um, with uh, strangers, with all of the natural world and, uh, you know, the great, as Mary Oliver would say, the great family of things, the way that we relate, how can, be, how can we honor all of life wherever and in whatever forms it may dwell? And how can we 
moment by moment, sort of choose to not dishonor our souls with hatred. It's a practice and one could look at it as a very sacred practice and one could look at it as a very generative practice. The hatred is a destructive force. Honoring and having a sense of respect is a generative, creative force. And I think we need so much of that in the world right now. We don't need to destroy life in its many forms. But there is a need to honor life in its many forms. So I hope you love that poem as much as I do. It's so good. Thank you, Diane Ackerman. And um, we'll be holding Diane Ackerman's um, perspective in our hearts, you know, and every time we have the opportunity to read a poem, we have the gift of getting for a moment to try to see the world through the eyes of another. There's something so enriching about that and so important. And we might notice, you know, that's not how I, I wouldn't have saw that or I wouldn't have said it that way. And there's something really fun about feeling where we're different. And that's the brilliance of being in the circle and the, you know, the family, uh, the human family circle or a wild woman circle. It's so rich to just get to a moment to see through another's eyes. It expands our own perspectives and we can celebrate the places where we're different and we can celebrate the places where we are similar. It's comforting, you know, and, and the dynamism between both of those experiences of being like one another and being different than one another are so important. So we thank Diane Ackerman for this sweet poem and we'll continue to hold Diane Ackerman's perspective and works throughout this moon cycle. So you can look forward to more, um, you know, quotes and poems and thoughts on her throughout this moon cycle on social media and also in our newsletter, Wild Woman Weekly-ish, which you can sign up for on our homepage of our website, thewildwomanproject.com. So before I let you go, and without closing final something, I would love to tell you what's coming up. We have so much happening. So as with every new moon, we have wild woman project circles happening um, all over the world. And some of them are happening online. So you can find links below these video, this video to a list of all of our facilitators who are facilitating and our telecircles that are happening. So that are happening virtually if you can't uh, come to a live circle. We also just next week on April 4th, begin a whole new program. So this is Befriending Your Moon Cycle. It's a four week women's circle series. So it's it meets every Monday online from anywhere and it explores menstruation and the mirrors of the menstrual cycle to um, the natural world. And it is an opportunity to really delve into this topic. We'll week by week be guided by Nina Paris, who's a beautiful facilitator um, in an exploration of, of the four main phases of the menstruation cycle. So if you're interested in that, we'd love to have you, link below this video. And then very exciting, our foundational program, our Wild Woman Project Circle Leader Training is coming up this spring and registration for it opens on April 7th at noon Eastern time. So you can mark your calendar. Um, this program is in its 11th year of life. It is online from anywhere. It's seven weeks long. It's a very rich program. We've been developing it for a long time. And we're super excited about this particular session because we're making a lot of updates. So those of you who participate in the spring training will have the most up-to-date 
um, you know, some things that we have never shared before uh, formally. And, you know, it'll be all centered around the wild woman archetype, uh, the moon cycles. It'll be a uh, skill building. You'll learn how to facilitate meditation for a group, how to facilitate circle and a ritual for a group. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you if you'd like to be there. So mark your calendars for April 7th. You'll find a link below this video that has tons of information about the program and plus the words of many women who have graduated from it. And we have hundreds of graduates in 23 countries all over the world. So that's happening this spring. So I will leave you with this on this new moon. You are welcome to share a verse in the name of this, in the name of that, in the name of this, whatever you're seeing in the natural world um, to add to Diane Ackerman's poem in the comments or simply in the privacy of your own journal as a practice. I want to also say, if this idea, I will not dishonor my soul with hatred resonates for you. You might take it on as um, like a little mini prayer that you say each day, particularly if you're struggling with that, you know, if there's like anyone in the world with whom, like that, that you hate. Maybe you can take this on as a kind of um, prayer and you can say it to yourself. You can take it on a walk with you. You can hold it in meditation. You can write it down a, a lot of times in your journal. I will not dishonor my soul with hatred. I will not dishonor my soul with hatred. I think a lot of the media forces would like us to hate each other. And it takes a creative act and it takes a lot of intention to make sure we don't allow ourselves to be hijacked by that kind of um, destructive thinking. So you might take that on as a practice. So I'm gonna leave you with the last verse of this poem, which is so beautiful. So I will honor all life wherever and in whatever form it may dwell. On earth, my home, and in the mansions of the stars. Mm -hmm.